Hello, my friend. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton. I'm an Irish storyteller, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. Tonight's story is about an old man who likes to share the power of words and language. In the form of print, he lives in a little Scottish village many years ago and shares words of comfort with those who need it. All will become clear later. Now I can't take full credit for this story. My wife, Rebecca, actually came up with the idea and I liked it so much that I wrote it immediately. I hope you like it, and if you'd like a part two, let me know in the comments. One small thing. A lot of people ask how they can support my work. You can do so on Patreon by becoming a patron of the channel. The link is below this video. Thank you. Okay, let's do the relaxation session now, which will take a few minutes before tonight's sleep story. I'm going to count down from 10 to one. And as I do, allow yourself to let go more and more. 10. Feel yourself supported in this moment. The support that is offered by your bed or the floor, or whatever you might be sleeping on. And the earth beneath that. The earth supports us. No matter what height in a building we are at, The earth is always there. It's constant. So feel the support of that. The solidity. And allow that solidity to enable you to let go a little more now. Nine, feel into your body now. Just notice whatever might be happening in your body. Where are you holding tonight? Are you holding in your feet? Are you holding in your hands? Are you holding in your face? Are you holding in your neck? Do you feel any tingling or any pain? Just notice anything now and anything you can release or soften a little. Try and allow that to happen now. Eight. The day is done. Whatever has been, has been. Whatever will be, will be. In this moment, allow yourself to indulge in the enjoyment that is before you, the opportunity to listen to my voice, bringing you to a place of peace and safety. 
whatever thoughts you might have about the day that just was. They won't serve you in this moment. Whatever thoughts you might have about what is to come, they won't serve you in this moment either. So surrender to the moment now. Don't fight the thoughts. Just see them for what they are. Thoughts. And imagine them floating away. Like clouds passing through a starry sky. Seven. You are safe. You are okay. Allow my voice to be a friend, a friend of safety, that will only take you to safe places. Allow my voice to be an anchor, a point of safety to come to as you approach sleep. Know that you are safe and that all is fine. Six. This is your moment. You deserve rest. We all do. So allow that fact to bring you deeper into this moment now. To feel a further softening. Five. There is always peace within you. It is a part of you. It lives within you. It may not always be seen, but it's just waiting to be discovered. Allow yourself to see that peace now within you. Allow yourself to feel that peace within you. Four, perhaps allow a little gratitude for this moment. Indulge in this moment. Indulge in the coziness of it. Get a little more comfortable if you want. Really snuggle into this moment. For you deserve it. Three. Begin to engage with your imagination now. Begin to see a little Scottish town beneath beautiful mountains, deep in the night time. All is dark and quiet, but one flickering candlelight in a window. Begin to feel the peace of this place. Allow your imagination to go here, to this comforting, safe environment. Two, you have nowhere to be now. Nowhere to go. One, completely letting go now, as I tell you, tonight's sleep story. It is deep in the night time, in a little Scottish town, 
Well, over a hundred years ago, the town sleeps and all is quiet. Snow is falling and the townsfolk are cosily wrapped up in their beds. The gas street lights have been put out and in this part of the world In this time, there is complete and real darkness, but in the coziest way possible. There is but one person that remains awake in the little town, but this is nothing unusual, for he is always the one awake and the only one who plans things this way. They call him the printer. Now, not many have met him. Some think they might have seen him. And what is known about him amounts to little. But one thing is sure, the printer has a heart of gold and is a kind and wise soul. Now what I am about to tell you, no one knows for certain, so you are about to become privy to some incredibly secret information. On different mornings, for decades now, the people of the town are greeted occasionally by a card in their letterbox. The card will always be beautifully printed and will always contain, well, maybe I'm telling you too much. Let's go and see the printer at work first, and I can tell you more about him as we go. The printing room is lit only by the flickering glow of candles, which illuminate the space, casting a warm golden light over the old machinery and the man who operates it. The old man, the printer, is a figure of quiet dedication. His hair is a wispy halo of silver and his hands, though aged and lined, move with a purposeful grace that speak of years perfecting his craft. He wears a well-worn apron, ink-stained and faded, from countless nights spent in this very room. His eyes, sharp and bright despite his years, Focus intently on the task at hand. He moves around the printing press. A magical piece of old machinery. As old and respected as he is. Its gears and levers. Worn smooth by use. Come alive under his expert touch. The printer sets about his work with a rhythmic precision. He selects each typepiece with careful consideration. His fingers 
deftly navigating the array of letters and symbols. Each piece is a small work of art, cast in metal, carrying the weight of words yet to be shared. He arranges the type in the composing stick, forming words and sentences with a meticulousness that turns the process into a quiet meditation. The words he chooses are not just letters strung together. They are messages of wisdom, hope, and comfort. Each card he creates is a gift of his insight, a sharing of the wisdom he has taken on over his many years. Once the type is set, he locks it into the chase and places it onto the press. The ink, a deep, rich black, is rolled carefully over the raised letters. He then feeds a sheet of card into the machine, its blank expanse soon to be transformed. And with a practiced hand, he operates the press. The creaks and groans of the machine, a familiar chorus to his nightly endeavors. The press comes to life. The smell of ink fills the air. And with a smooth motion, the printer pulls the lever, transferring the ink onto the paper with a satisfying press. And as the old printer continues his work, he often finds himself reflecting on the profound impact of the printing press. He thinks about how this remarkable invention transformed the world we live in bringing about a revolution, not just in technology, but in thought and culture and how we as humans see the world. To him, the printing press is much more than a machine. It's an embodiment of human progress, a birthplace for the spread of ideas and knowledge. He muses on the power of words and language when committed to print. Each letter he sets, each page he prints, is part of a much bigger narrative, the narrative of human civilization. He thinks about how it opened up knowledge to the masses, breaking down barriers that once kept that knowledge in the hands of the few. 
It gave voice to the voiceless, power to the powerless. It was a beacon of enlightenment, dispelling the shadows of ignorance and superstition. And as he continues to ink the type and press the paper, he contemplates the countless minds awakened by the words that have flowed from presses like his, books, pamphlets, newspapers, each one spreading knowledge to those who once didn't have it. Even the plays of Shakespeare were printed on the press. Actors getting their parts as a result of printing. People learning of news as a result of printing. Humans learning of grand ideas in philosophy as a result of printing. Ideas, thoughts, and great works of art kept forever as a result of printing. History and the knowledge of it kept because of printing. The old man feels a part of this legacy in a very small way. But in his own way, nonetheless, the first card the printer crafts is for an old woman who is grieving. He chooses words of comfort and empathy, his hands steady as he sets the type. The card reads, In the garden of memory, love forever blooms. Though they may leave the world, they never leave the heart. In every gentle breeze, in the quiet moments of the night, Feel their presence, for love is a bond that even time cannot sever. He prints the card, watching as the words take form, hoping they might bring a measure of solace to her aching heart. Next, he prepares a card for the young man anxious about what lies ahead in life. The printer selects each letter with thoughtful care, forming a message of encouragement and wisdom. The card says, the path of life is both shadowed and bright. Embrace uncertainty as a chance for growth. Remember, the mightiest oak was once a nut 
that stood its ground. Your potential is a seed. Let patience and courage water it. He admires the printed card. Its message, a gentle reminder of resilience and hope. Next, he prints a card for a little child who always wants more and struggles with contentment. The printer decides on a simple parable. Once, a bird sang a sweet song, content with the sunrise and a single berry. Another bird, with plenty, still sought more, never noticing the sunrise, nor tasting the sweetness of each berry. True joy is in the moment not in the multitude. He hopes this story on the card might instill a sense of gratitude and the value of savoring the simple things in life. Next, the printer composes a card for a woman who longs for her youth. The words he chooses are delicate, yet powerful, reflecting on the beauty of life at every stage. Every season has its charm. Each age its own beauty. Like a tree, we grow. From the greenness of youth to the richness of age. Embrace the blossoms of your years. Each one has shaped you into the wonder you are now. And the final card of the night is for a couple struggling to find common ground. The printer decides on a message of understanding and compromise. The card reads, Two trees side by side, different, yet rooted in the same ground. To grow together, they bend in understanding, they reach out in kindness. Shared soil, shared sky, in harmony, you'll find your greatest strength. He carefully examines the printed card, hoping it will help bridge the gap between two hearts. With each card printed, the old man gazes at them with satisfaction. He believes in the power of words that are crafted with care and empathy. And in the quiet of his workshop, 
surrounded by the flickering candlelight, he feels himself a deep contentment. Now, bundled in his heavy coat, against the biting cold, he steps out into the silent, snow-covered streets. The night is deep and still. The world around him, wrapped in a blanket of white. The only sound is the soft crunch of his boots as he treads carefully through the freshly fallen snow. In one hand, he carries a small gas lamp. It's light, casting a warm glow that pierces the darkness. It illuminates the quaint cobblestone streets and the charming rows of houses, their roofs heavy with snow, chimneys standing tall against the star-filled sky. The town, though asleep, holds a cozy charm. The houses, huddled together as if for warmth, are a patchwork of aged stone and wood. Their windows dark, but for the occasional flicker of a dying fire. The old printer moves with practiced stealth keen not to disturb the peaceful slumber of the townsfolk. And as he walks, the printer admires the simple beauty of the scene. The way the snow clings to the branches of the trees turning them into delicate sculptures. The hush over the town is a silence so profound that it feels almost sacred. At every house, He pauses, carefully selecting a card from his bundle and sliding it through the letterbox. And with each delivery, he imagines the surprise and joy his words will bring come morning a secret gift of wisdom and kindness to start the day. The old printer's journey through the town is a ritual of sorts, a labor of love, and a silent promise to his neighbors. After completing his nightly rounds, 
The old printer retraces his steps through the silent, snow-covered streets. The gas lamp in his hand continues to cast its warm glow. A faithful companion in the quiet of the night. The town remains undisturbed. Its peaceful slumber unbroken. As he makes his way back to his humble abode. The printer's house, a small, cozy building, nestled on the edge of town, welcomes him with the promise of warmth and rest. He carefully extinguishes the lamp its light flickering out and surrendering to the comforting darkness. The snow continues to fall gently, each flake a silent kiss upon the earth. Inside, the printer sheds his coat and boots. The warmth of his home, very welcome. He takes a moment to sit by the dying embers of his fireplace, reflecting on the night's work. His heart is full, knowing that his words, nestled in the letterboxes of his neighbors, will bring comfort, guidance, or a moment of reflection. As the new day dawns, with a contented sigh, he rises and prepares for bed. The house is quiet, save for the soft ticking of an old clock and the occasional creak of the wooden floorboards, settling under the weight of years and memories. As he lies down, pulling the blankets up to his chin, the printer closes his eyes and drifts towards sleep. In the stillness of his room, he imagines the faces of those who will find his cards in the morning. He dreams of the old woman, the young man, the child, the woman and the couple and all of the rest of the villagers, each finding in his words a message meant just for them. 
In his dreams, he walks through the town, invisible yet present. He sees tears of relief, smiles of hope, nods of understanding. Each card, a simple piece of paper with inked letters, but at the same time, so much more.